Judging how good a flag is, is simple. Just how much do people use it? And under that measure, Colorado may have one of the best flags on planet Earth. It's on every street sign, every house, every other car on the highway. You cannot avoid this flag. And as much as I love this state and this flag, there's one thing that has bugged me for most of my life. And it's the fact that the opening of the sea is just wildly inconsistent. Sometimes the tips of the sea touch the line between the blue and the white, like these road signs. But then why does this road sign not have it touching? And why is this the way it is? Why does this one have one tip inside of the white line and one tip outside of the white line? And of course, every flag that we sell at flagsforgood.com, it touches the line because it's the most visually aesthetic and appealing way to do it, right? I mean, it, that just seems correct. I mean, are these correct? Are they just lazy? So I've come to Colorado to figure out once and for all, what the hell is going on with this seat? To get to the bottom of this question, we have to start at the beginning. So Colorado has had two official flags since it became a state. The first one was this from 1907. It's just the seal on a bed sheet, and apparently only one of them was made as far as I can tell, and it was put in a janitor's closet here in the Capitol, and no one ever saw it again. I just need to state that every single flag that I have found in the state capitol, the tips of the sea touch that line. So, I don't know what the right answer is, but it feels right, it looks right, and it's the one that they fly at the capitol, so... Enter the Daughters of the American Revolution, the DAR. Yes, that one from Gilmore Girls. They actually helped make a lot of the state flags that we have today. And here in Colorado, in the year 1910, they decided Colorado needs a state flag, not realizing that they already had one. So they come up with, wait for it, yeah, another seal on a bed sheet. But this one at least has three stripes behind it, so it's a little bit better than all the others. But they tried to push this through. Why is this not the flag of Colorado? Well, literally no one liked it. That's right. In the Senate chamber behind me, the state senator that was helping them trying to get this passed, he couldn't get anybody to sign up on it. So this shows that government can work. An alternate design was proposed by Andrew Carlisle Johnson, and it was simply this. Two horizontal stripes of Yale blue with one white stripe in between, all of equal width, and a large red C with a gold center at the end near the pole. This new design flew through the state house, and just six months after the DAR initially met, this flag made its debut. But there were some problems right off the bat. First of all, they didn't specify what blue or red the flag should have, and so people were just making it whatever they wanted. And so in 1929, the General Assembly decided, you know what, we're gonna make it the same blue and red as the United States flag, which to me is a little bit of a cop-out. This flag displayed at the History Colorado Center is from 1941, and it hung in the governor's office until 1958. And you'll notice it touches the line. As you've probably figured out, there's still a problem, the big problem, the one that we're making this whole video about. They had not standardized the shape of this letter C. So people were making flags with all kinds of variations where the, the C was small, the C was huge, until 1964, when finally they passed a legislation defining the flag that we see today. So to dive into that legislation, let's go somewhere a little bit more Colorado. The flag of Colorado is three horizontal bands of blue, white, and blue. The blue represents the gorgeous sky, and the white represents the snow-capped Rocky Mountains that everybody thinks of when they think of Colorado. 
Now that's C. It starts one fifth of the flag away from the hoist edge and it is two thirds of the flag in diameter. Sorry to interrupt. Hey, it's Michael from the end of the video. Uh, what I just said is true. The law says that the diameter of the C is two thirds the width of the flag. But I'm about to explain to you in like two minutes why I think that's wrong or at least super vague and not helpful. So I'll, I'll see you in a little bit. The red color represents the red earth that Colorado gets its name from. And inside of the sea is a golden disc. And that represents the abundant sunshine that Colorado gets. And the gold and the white together represent the gold and silver, which brought so many pioneers and settlers here in the 1800s. But now we're back to the big question. Is the opening in the sea actually defined? Okay, so I just, I just found it. When I started this video, I didn't know if this question actually had an answer. And I'm here at lunch with Rachel from Outpatch, which if you've ever gotten one of our patches that is made out of recycled plastic bottles, that's from Outpatch. So I'm on my computer. I, found, I had to dig into the legislation from 1964 to find it. And buried in there is the actual thing that says about the opening. You ready for this? Hit. It, okay, it says the inner line of the opening of the letter C shall be three fourths the width of its body or bar. I don't know what that means. And then the outer line shall be double the length of the inner line thereof. Don't make sense. That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense at all. I feel like I need a math degree to figure that out. So I made it back to Indianapolis and I just spent a full day doing math and reading this law over and over again, word by word, and I figured it out. And I'm equally as frustrated as I am vindicated because this law is written so poorly. L let me just, let me break it down for you. The first part of the section is everything I had said earlier. Three stripes, all of equal width, etc. Here's where the confusion begins. At a distance from the staff end of the flag of one fifth the total length of the flag, so I've made a little marker there, there's one fifth away from the, from the hoist edge, there shall be a circular red C, same color as the flag of the United States. Cool. Now here's the confusion. The diameter of the letter shall be two thirds the width of the flag. The way I read that, and the way that everyone I've talked to reads it is this. The width of the letter is two thirds the width of the flag. This is two thirds the width of the flag. That means the C is that big if it starts there at the one fifth. That's not, that's not, that's clearly wrong. What I think that they're trying to say is that the C begins at the one fifth mark, but then extends to the two thirds mark which would make it this. That looks correct. I think that's what the law means, but it's super vague. And the next sentence is also super confusing. This is the one that confused me and Rachel so much. The opening of the letter C shall be three fourths the width of its body or bar. So my first thought is, okay, are you talking this width? This is how big the opening is? Three fourths of this? Because that's huge. That can't be right. What I think it means is the toric section of the letter because the C is actually a torus. So this is the length in which you divide by three fourths. This, my friends, is the correct answer. This is the flag of Colorado exactly to my understanding of the law. And you notice the tips of the C are inside of the white line. However, this is the official proportion of two by three. Does anybody fly a two by three flag anymore? No. Most flags in the United States are three foot by five foot. So, because the outer opening of the sea is dependent upon the length of the inner opening of the sea, and the inner opening of the sea is dependent upon the toric section of the sea, and the toric section of the sea is dependent upon the width of the flag, 
then if you were to make a three by five Colorado flag following the law, this is what you get. And do you notice where the tips of the C are, ladies and gentlemen? They are right there by the white line. There it is. But I hope you can see the problem here. In the modern age, flags are all different sizes. What happens when you have a circular Twitter avatar, for instance? How big is the C then? You must write the law where it's clear de not dependent upon the width. And here's a perfect example why. The garden flag that I showed at the beginning of the video, if I used the width of this flag to determine the shape of the letter C, do you know what it would look like? It looks like that. That looks terrible. So if you happen to be watching this video and work for the legislature in Colorado, give me a call because I have some ideas of how we could write an update bill that would solve all of these problems. And it would update the Colorado flag to be something that is standardized and actually matches every flag that's flying inside of your state capitol right now. Of course, if you need a Colorado flag in any size, shape, or variation, we have them at flagsforgood.com and they all touch that white line. I'm Michael from Flags for Good. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. This is Flags for Good for you. The flag of Colorado, a little bit more excited, Michael. The flag of Colorado, Rocky Mountains that make this state incredible. God damn it. All right. One fifth of the way, I can't say the words. It is, oh, me. It's diameter, me in the ass. The red represents the me. 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 And I'm right in the path of everybody walking. So I'm gonna have to get this shot quickly. It's the red earth that Colorado gets its name from. You're good, go ahead. It is dry. You need chapstick if you live here. I hope I'm that good looking whenever I'm in my 50s. I hate this, this is not fun. Why did I choose to shoot here? This is dumb. Jesus Christ.